Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. When it comes to motivation, carrots and sticks don't work, but we know what does. Hello everyone, Kevin Cruz here, helping you to get 1% better each and every day. Today we're gonna to learn how we can all build a culture of employee engagement, where all of our team members are emotionally connected to their companies and their goals. But first, I wanna encourage you to visit leadx.org, sign up for our 60 second newsletter. Each issue has actionable tips you can try out right away to improve your productivity and to advance your career. Visit leadx.org. Now our guest today shares my passion for employee engagement and we've become good friends over recent years. He earned his doctorate in clinical psychology from Yale. He served on the faculties of Davidson and Princeton. He travels the world speaking on topics of leadership, culture, and retention. And he's the author of several books, including Super Teams and the bestseller, Carrots and Sticks Don't Work, Build a Culture of Employee Engagement with the Principles of Respect. Our guest today is Dr. Paul Marciano. Paul, welcome. How you doing? I'm doing well, Kevin. Uh, honored to be on your show, my friend. Uh, thanks for joining us. Now, Paul, uh, we're going to talk about carrots and sticks in just a minute, but we like to start out right away giving immediate value, high energy to our listeners. So uh, I'm just going to ask you some, some quick questions we call the lightning round. You ready for those? I'm ready. All right. So what advice would you give to a young professional who's eager to get ahead in her career? So the answer is this, to not focus so much about getting ahead in her career. Tell me I, more. This is fascinating. Well, I think one of the things that we see, Kevin, you know, in the last several years, especially with, you know, the millennials coming up is, is that, you know, it's very clear that they're focused on their career and whatever it takes. And it's almost a, a loss of focus in what I think is the most important thing it, is to make yourself invaluable to your boss, make it so your boss can't live without you and understand that your job is to do whatever you can to make his job easier and to make him look good. And the irony of that is, of course, the more you do that, the more you'll advance in your own career anyway, right? <laughs> uh, of course. But if you go out there with that mindset, hey, I want to advance my own career, I, I don't think that's a good mindset. And I know you've worked with uh, leaders around the world, you know, serving as their executive coach. You know, what's a common uh, mistake or weakness that you often see they have? You know, I, I think one of the most important uh, qualities uh, that a leader can have is really having a clear vision. You know, I, I think about a leader, I always think about Martin Luther King on the mall and, you know, the tens of thousands of people. And, you know, leadership is about um, having a clear vision, being able to articulate it and inspire others in ways that have them, you know, act to fulfill your vision. And I, I see a lot of leaders that maybe get caught up in, in say, the numbers, but don't have a, a, a really clear vision that they're able to inspire their followers. And, and that's, that's probably, for me, the piece that I see missing a lot. That makes a lot of sense. Now, shifting a little bit, you know, we talk a lot about productivity on the show, and I have um, just a curiosity, you know, high achievement uh, folks, they often have sort of the same morning rituals I've found. You know, what does your typical morning look like? Well, you know, I've, since I've recently uh, turned 50 and in the past several years, uh, things happen. Trust me, my friend, I know you're not there yet. Um, Very soon. <laughs> but, uh, but gaining some perspective. One a piece of advice that I would actually give to folks is, is to have some work-life balance and I know you well enough to know that it's it, we we both have a tremendous work ethic, and so one of the things that I've started to do, actually only in the past year or so, is to just take time in the morning to get present. And for me, that involves uh, uh, very blessed to live on uh, my family's hundred acre horse farm, so taking my dog out in the morning. Um, this morning, got out early enough to see the sunrise and. To just really, for me, it's very grounding before all sort of the chaos that tends to break out in our lives. So that's that's what works for me right now. That's great. 
Do you have a, a particular book or resource, other than your own, of course, that you could recommend to our listeners? And other than yours? <laughs> well, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I got to look if you're number one or I'm number one today. Um, but y- you know, I there are a number of really great books out there. Obviously, I, I appreciate the the TED talks because you know you're getting obviously some of the most brilliant minds there are in the field. And for me, it's it's a quick shot. So it, it you can download them, you can do the podcast, you can do the drive to work and. Um, there, you know, there's just a, a wealth of those, a library. And as I said, and, and the greatest resource we all struggle with probably is time. So I, I, I find a lot of value in, in the TED Talks. That's great. So, Paul, your book is called Carrots and Sticks Don't Work. So let, let's just start there. What do you mean by that? Why don't they work? Well, it, it's interesting, um, Kevin, because there's uh, 40 years worth of research that traditional reward and recognition programs not only aren't they effective, they actually decrease the overall morale of a workforce. And yet companies continue to spend their money and their time investing in the worst. The worst is employee of the month. I mean, if you if you really want to do something actually to demotivate your team, go ahead and, and put that one into place. This is um, I love it because it's so contrarian, right? I mean, it, it's <laughs> every everybody starts usually with that spot employee of the month uh it's probably the thing that is is easy to implement perhaps and they think they're doing uh the right thing but clearly uh uh it's not working now i know you say that instead of doing this kind of individual recognition individual rewards you know you have a model that you call respect so walk us through that model what is that Sure. And as some quick background, my my dissertation at Yale was on motivation. And in 2000, I was asked to actually present on motivating employees in the 21st century. And, you know, knowing all the models, I started making my slide deck and and realized that I would put my entire audience to sleep, you know, with these different theoretical models. And I think more importantly, not leave them with something of of real tangible value that they could act on. So I, 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 I love whiteboards. And so I began just playing and uh, connecting the dots and crossing things off and and really got to this idea of respect as such a fundamental driver of motivation. And and more importantly, of course, for our field is uh, is engagement. And so what I find is that the extent to which people feel respected and respect the leadership of the organization, their the work that they do, they take pride in that work and their fellow team members. Uh, when, when, If you look at it, if you break it down, I know we don't have enough time in, 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 in today, but um, it, respect is really what drives engagement in people. And I would just give you a, a quick snippet of this. I've been very blessed to, to have the book translated in a number of languages, and it just speaks to the importance of respect in any culture. And it really is actually a matter of life and death. If you think about um, people dueling, you know, it was perfectly acceptable way to settle disagreements in this country until the late 1800s, Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. So when you were slighted, um, to restore respect and honor, you'd be willing to kill somebody or be killed by them. And you can look at, you know, Asian cultures, people willing to take their own lives for the same reasons. You can look at gangs going to war because they have nothing but respect. And you certainly can look at different wars and revolutions such as the civil war in which the you know the the rights of african americans um, and respecting uh, their rights comes into play so it's actually really quite fascinating for me to see the power of respect and um, paul uh, do you have time to just walk us through quickly what the acronym means you've set up this model for uh, to help manage you know managers leaders to to implement and uh, create a, a culture of respect yeah, I can walk through that. Um, sure, of course. Um, so when I recognized the power of respect, I wanted to understand what were the factors, the drivers that really led somebody to feel respected by their supervisor. And and as I, I came about, the, the R is for recognition. So recognizing and acknowledging people's contributions. And again, not in the traditional employee of the month, but actually something as simple as going up, Kevin, shaking your hand and say, thank you for staying late and working with that customer. It made a difference for, for us and for that customer. 
Um, I always ask the question, who's ever gotten a yellow sticky note from their boss? And a couple of people in the audience, you know, thank you. Good job. And I, a couple of people raise their hand in the audience. And I've asked hundreds of times, what have you done with that sticky note? And they said, I kept it. Um, it, it, it's just amazing that you would keep this little tiny piece of paper that would tell you at some point in time you did something worth some praise. So, and then just very quickly, I'll, I'll read it on the rest of them. And it, it, recognition is so powerful. And we know that, uh, when we recognize and acknowledge people for their contributions, they're more likely to engage in the desirable behavior on their own without a prompt, which means initiative. And for me, if you're looking for one quality characteristic in a person, it's initiative. The problem is when you don't recognize and acknowledge people for what they've done, it actually decreases the likelihood of that behavior occurring again in the future. And there are all kinds of um, ways to make recognition uh, powerful. And actually in, in, in the chapters in the book, it, it mentions very specific ways to do that. The E is for empowering um, employees. And I think that we do the greatest disservice to our first line supervisors. We promote them for reasons that have nothing to do with being successful in the people manager role. We promote them because they're really good at turning the wrench, whatever that is. They have good work ethic. They have tenure. Maybe they have an advanced degree. My favorite is somebody needed to fill the slot, but not because they have the skills of, of coaching, of delegating, of uh, building teamwork. And so empowering means, especially at this supervisor level, making sure that they have the training, the skills that they need to be successful. So empowering. Uh, S is for supportive feedback. And so I always ask, who likes giving critical feedback? And I haven't met a whole lot of people <laughs> who do. Um, so what I say is you don't have to worry about giving critical feedback, all you have to do is worry about giving supportive feedback. So feedback that comes from a place that I care about you being successful, I care about our team being successful. And again, to, to be, you can give the most critical feedback, Kevin, but do it in a respectful and constructive, not destructive manner. Uh, partnering, so developing collaborative working relationships, First, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, breaking down that hierarchy, um, breaking down silos across departments. So really fostering this active kind of collaboration within and across teams. Um, the second E is for setting clear expectations and holding people accountable. And I always tell a manager, if your employees not meeting the, you know, the goals is not doing what they're being asked to do, it's because they don't respect you. Because if they respected you, they would get the job done. Um, and by the way, how do we reward our best employees? We give them more work. And so at some point, they look behind and they say, Paul's not pulling his weight. Why am I doing his job? They get disengaged. And you again lose respect because they're saying, why aren't you holding Paul accountable? If you're not able to set clear expectations and hold people accountable, being a people manager is not a good fit for you. The C is for consideration. So demonstrating, you know, just basic kinds of civility of thank you and please and holding the door open. Uh, it, it, it's scary. It's remarkable to me, actually, the lack of consideration that goes on uh, in the workforce. And one of my favorite quotes is uh, people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. And uh, by uh, Maxwell. And so this, this, the mo you know, and that's one of those things, Kevin, that, that people are tend to be naturally good at or not naturally mm. good at. You know, empathy, I think, is such a critical characteristic and one that's really hard to teach. Yeah. And then the last is is trust and and you know, like respect. Re relationships don't work without a base of trust, and we can all, I think, relate both professionally and personally. If we're in a relationship, something happens uh, and that trust is broken, it's almost impossible to put it back together. And if you can, it's just never the same. And I actually, as harsh as this might sound, Kevin, I suggest that when that trust is broken, some way someone walks away. It's just, and I'll say one more thing about that. I, I did a lot of research on, on personality traits and effective leadership. And the, the biggest driver was trust. And I realized that it's because the opposite of di is distrust 
And that gets manifested behaviorally as micromanaging. Mm. And for anybody who's ever had somebody micromanage and looking over their shoulder and conveying, I don't trust you to get your job done, uh, nothing squashes initiative and enthusiasm like that. Paul, um, pure gold. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not making this up like, you know, you and I have we geek out on this stuff all the time. We have for years. And yet I'm still as you're talking, I'm writing notes in your book in front of me, uh, just phrases and some new new connections. Um, and, and I want to come back to trust in a minute. But, you know, what I loved you, when you're talking about recognition and that power of even just the sticky note, the tiny little sticky note from from your boss, um, I think. I, I, I preach the same thing. I mean, handwritten thank you notes are pure gold. I mean, it's almost like a magic spell. And in this day and age, I think it's becoming more powerful because in this day and age of text messaging, emails, everything's short format, you know, to yep. actually <laughs> for someone to, to take the time to find a piece of paper and a pen and to remember how to how to write by hand again. I mean, it means a lot. You know, the, the time they, that goes into it, even if it's just a sentence or two, uh, I, I just think that's so powerful. So and let me just piggy bank, if yeah. you don't mind, uh, on that for a quick moment. I, I worked with an organization for quite a time and it was a very beachy with the stick kind of organization. And in the department manager meetings, it was all about. Hey, you know, pointing the finger and who can get beat up. And we've really changed the culture. And, and now what it's about is at the beginning of every meeting, uh, quarterly meeting, it's who do we need to recognize in our organization that's a God above and beyond? Hey, sometimes it's nobody. Sometimes it's two people. Maybe sometimes it's an entire team that's really gone above and beyond. And then um, the HR manager writes a handwritten note and the three owners, uh, the company sign it. And I mean, what, that if, when they mail it home, actually, you know, Kevin, people get nervous, <laughs> you know, they get, what is this letter? A, a you know, note from HR. <laughs> exactly. But uh, <clears throat> it has just been, rem- and there's no gift card, you know, it, it's just, um, it, it just, it's, it, it's so meaningful to people. It just is. And again, what I like about um, that solution that, that, that you, you baked in is, it's part of the system. What I'm always right. afraid of is, look, even if I have the best of intentions and I want to to recognize people who have, you know, gone above and beyond, you know, I'm human. So I'm going to forget. I'm going to be busy. I'm, my focus is elsewhere. If I just say at the start of every staff meeting, I will start with recognition or start of every quarterly meeting, I'll start just – Bake it into something, stack it right next to some other habit that you have, Absolutely. and then it becomes cultural. So I think that's that's great. No, that's really an important point. Really good. So Paul, you were you so you ended on trust, and you said, "Hey, that is like the biggest driver." And and again, one of the phrases I just want to emphasize for people because I I wrote it down. You said, you know, the the opposite of trust is distrust. It manifests as micromanaging, and I kind of felt a twinge inside because this is an area that I need to always uh, improve on myself, and I catch myself micromanaging team members or doing things that I I really shouldn't uh, be doing. So let's like help me help others uh, dive deeper into trust. Like how can we build trust on our teams? Right. What, what could we do in that area? Well, let me just step back a little yeah. bit. I think it's helpful to understand why it is that people don't trust more perhaps. And, and again, you know, people come at, some people are just naturally more trusting than others. And uh, I'm actually coaching a gentleman right now and the, the focus is on trust. And I, I find this hysterical. I mean, I, sad and hysterical. It's a uh, construction company and he literally has been caught, been caught hiding behind a truck. <laughs> watching. <people. laughs> you know, and these are things you can't make up. <laughs> and so for him, it's it, again, going back to the reason that people are promoted and they're really good at turning the wrench. Typically by default, you as the manager is going to be better. You're yeah. going to be better than your staff and you have high quality, right? You have a, a quality at a work ethic. So it's just so tempting. And yet we all know, certainly at that intellectual level, the importance of, of training people. So one of the things that I'll, I'll say, one of the things I try to get people present to is to think about the best boss they ever had and to ask, is that somebody who trusted you? Mm. and gave you the opportunity 
to try new things? And invariably they say yes. So if, if, if you have an issue with trust, um, what you want to do is one, first of all, make sure that when you're assigning a task that that person is competent and capable to do it. You know, when I have asked somebody to do something and they don't do it, I don't immediately go to that person's passive aggressive or they're trying to sabotage me or anybody else, including themselves. Usually why people fail is because A, it ain't really clear what it is they were supposed to do. It just, we all think we're great communicators, but it's, it's often the case we haven't been clear about it or they actually don't know how to complete the task. Mm. And that is really, really hard for one adult to say to another, I don't know how to do this. So in order to set people up for success, we want to make sure that we're giving them the kind of tasks that they're going to be able to succeed at. And what that's going to do is that's going to build trust and confidence in a bi-directional manner. It makes a lot of sense and opens up again, you know, the, um, communication going both, both ways. And I'm sure build so that, uh, <laughs> I, I get to a point where I can come back to you and say, I'm not quite sure how to accomplish this or, or I need more clarity, uh, around it. Yeah. I, and I always, I always say when I hire somebody that, uh, my re- my request is if, 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 if there's something I've asked you to do and either you're not clear or you're not comfortable with it, um, you, you got to tell me, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, trust does play such an integral role. And there are lots of ways to break trust. Um, you've got to be willing as, as a leader, a manager, when you screw up to raise your hand and say, I screwed up. You know, the worst thing you can do, and unfortunately there are too many examples from people is, you know, the boss lays it on you. Right, right. And then, you know, again, just shatters trust. So, you know, as a leader, it's, it's kind of the simple things, but it, it's do what you say you're going to do. Um, it's, uh, make it, you know, people, it, it, it's like, I think the, the, the army, you know, the service or a, a sports team, your employee has to know that you have their back. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously that's critical among teams too, but <clears throat> they just have to know that, that they've, that you've got their back and, and how you go about fostering that kind of relationship and the behaviors you engage in to do that. That's great. So Paul, before we wrap up, we do like to challenge our listeners every single day that we do the show to become at least 1% better. So we, we want them to experiment with like a new skill or a technique, kind of challenge them. What's one specific thing you can ask our listeners to try out today? Yeah. So, you know, we all know that I, I, communication is critical. We could do a survey in any organization in the world, any size and, you know, employee survey and, and poor communication would probably be number one. Um, I think probably the most important communication, um, skill is around active listening because we all want to be heard. We want, we want to have that feeling. And so two things around this one, especially when you're in a conversation with somebody you disagree with, or you've disagreed with in the past, I encourage people to get really curious. So it's one thing to say, Hey, you should actively listen. But if you take it to the point of I'm curious about the next words coming out of this person's mouth, it changes the way that you listen. And then the other that I think is a critical and simple skill is that of paraphrasing. So just saying, hey, Kevin, let me make sure I understand what you're saying, because, A, if I got it wrong, that's real important to know. Um, and B, the, again, it shows the other person that they've been heard. And once that's the case, it makes it a lot easier for them to listen to you. I love that. And I hope everybody takes up the challenge and uh, plays with that today. So Paul, what's the best way our listeners can find out more about your books, learn more about you? Um, uh, paulmarciano.com, uh, type in employee motivation or employee engagement in Amazon and see if you or I come up first and second. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Paul at paulmarciano.com if you want to reach out. That's great. Friends, you've just been mentored by Dr. Paul Marciano, a psychologist who truly understands how to motivate people to give you their best. You can get links and show notes from this interview over at leadx.org. You can get Paul's book, Carrots and Sticks Don't Work, 
build a culture of employee engagement with the principles of respect from Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. And if you have any questions for me or want to suggest a guest or just say hello, send me an email. I'm at kevin at leadx.org. Until next time, think about this quote from Erwin Fetterman. Your job gives you authority. Your behavior gives you respect. Respect.